Well, today's Wednesday walkabout is going to start inside and then we're going to go outside. And I want to show you a few things before the big cold blast comes tomorrow. So I think in the, it's probably what in the 50s now, Stuart, do you guess? But tomorrow it, we are going to just, the temperatures are just going to hit rock bottom. I think we're supposed to have some hopefully not destructive freezing rain but definitely some rain and some snow and i just hope none of it will do any damage and do nothing more than give us some much much needed moisture because we are f normally in january we would have gotten in excess of five inches we've gotten none we had none in december i don't think we had any in november so we are definitely in a drought you guys and i am just really holding my breath that we get some moisture that is going to be beneficial to the garden uh, as it goes into spring. So speaking of plants and gardens, this is my kind of indoor garden. I think of this as my, my greenhouse window in my dining room. I've got lots of my topiaries in here and some of them are getting a little bit shaggy because I am definitely letting them put on growth and that is a good thing and i'm going to do it more of a uh, a, a full uh, full topic topiary talk this weekend but i did want to show you that i've got topiary on the brain and i'm getting ready to do to write an article for garden gate magazine about topiary so i did want to show you this as i wanted to show you i'm still in my dining room here Stuart, be careful. Um, these are those hellebores that I got from Trader Joe's. And I wanted to show you a little tip. Now I'm keeping them inside for a while and I'm definitely keeping them indoors right now because of the cold blast that's getting ready to come. But here is something that I do. See all of these little seed heads that have fallen? I don't discard these. I typically use a little whisk broom and I take those and I spray sprinkle them around outside just in case any of those little seeds will germinate because it's been my experience that hellebore go to seed very, very prolifically and very easily. And aren't these gorgeous? So I got these, I think I got these last week. I showed them to you then. So they are still performing beautifully here on my dining room table. They have much more of an antique vibe to them. They were, I think, between 10 and $12 at Trader Joe's and I just love them. And I also, I think I, I can't, um, I, I really can't speak enough about the beauty of the foliage as well as the flowers. So I'll show you some hellebores that I bought last year from Trader Joe's that are out in the garden right now. So I, I wanted to show you that. So now Stuart, if you can come and follow me here into the living room because I so, so many of you all have asked me about my garden journal and I have showed this a number of different times, but I wanna show it again because it's this time of year that I'm not really recording a whole lot of garden things in my garden journal, but I am definitely recording temperatures. And this is the garden journal that I like to use and you can see I've had this one for a long time and I probably, I've kind of broken the spine on it because I have used it um, just so intensively. But this is a gardener's, gardener's journal. It's 10 year chronicle of my garden. I got this off of Lee Valley Tools. If you don't go to Amazon for this, if you want it, if you go to Amazon, I think they're trying to sell it for like $300 or something. You can get it for, I think, think under $40 maybe at Lee Valley Tools. That's where I got mine years ago. It's beautiful leather bound and I love the gold engraving on it. So I wanted to show you just a couple of things. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record. You can see here that in years past I have recorded the highs and the lows. And then I also keep in here different ideas that I may have for one thing and another. And these are some of the things that I've got on my idea list right now. This was the inspiration for this little miniature conservatory. They have um, 
uh, these air plants in theirs, I have a little orchid in mine and I think it's really, really dear. And I got that glass house many years ago from Gardener Supply. I'm not sure if it's still available or, available or not, but you can look there and it makes a sweet little housing and um, really beautiful and elegant staging for that little okra. So there, um, there is my garden journal. Looks like back in record snowfall, record low temps. That was in 11, in 2011. But boy, we blew that out of the water last year, didn't we, Stuart? I think next week the temperatures are supposed to get, I think I saw a two, which still isn't as bad as minus 13 last year. Stuart's eyes just lit up. You didn't know that this was coming, did you? <laughs> Did you? Um, and we're having to really kind of do some strategizing because tomorrow I'm going to be on QVC for the first time tomorrow night. I think it airs at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, those egg trellises, they've, they've gotten back in and I'm going to do a segment on them and we're trying to decide where to shoot that segment. Um, out in the office or in here because navigating over ice and s snow back and forth between them might be an issue. But if you guys uh, want to watch, it's on QVC tomorrow. It's just a brief segment uh, with Sandra tomorrow night. So now let's go outside and I'll show you some of the stuff that's going on in the garden. Hold on, Stuart, because I forgot my scissors. Here's another one of those sweet, sweet, sweet little orchids. So, let's come outside. Appreciate, if you will, where you can see them, all of my clean windows and doors. So there you go, Stuart, I'm holding the door for you. Um, I kind of have cleaned some stuff out here, but it just, it's, it just looks like heck. It's, it, I have had to water my window box. I about once a week have to deep water some of the things that I planted. I planted recently some uh, Southern Living Oakland hollies and a couple of baby gem boxwoods and I've had to I've had to really water them in. Even those that I planted last fall because we've had no additional rainfall or precipitation. I'm having to water all of those. So there is a little tip you guys if you uh, if you planted anything in the fall, give it some additional watering if, if you haven't had a, any rain. And that's my question of the day. Did you guys plant anything this winter, which is actually for evergreens and sometimes for trees, is a good time to plant them when they're dormant. But did you guys plant anything like that, that you are then having to babysit? You're having to feed, and or not feed, but water them so that they can survive the winter. So I've had to water all of these. Uh, some of my pansies and violas are gonna come back, but some of them just look pretty pitiful right now. I am in no way inclined to clean up any of the leafy foliage. I'm definitely not going to do that because it will need every bit of coverage and blanket cover that the garden can get when this cold front comes through. Now what I pray is that we will get enough snowfall that the snow itself will insulate the plants below it in addition to giving them some moisture. So look here, Stuart. I've got down here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Now my other colorful hellebores have started to bloom. This is a white one and I'm going to go ahead and cut it today. It won't last really long because it is just a bit too fresh, but nevertheless, it won't last any length of time at all when that cold front comes through. And you can see there's some other ones over there that are getting ready to bloom. And all of these, you guys, were ones that went to seed and that I just transplanted them from the large stand of these over here that I have showed you before. And I, I need to do some serious, serious dividing on these hellebores because they are just really taking over. I'm not gonna cut back any of the blemish damaged foliage right now because it will help insulate the plants below. But look under here, Stuart. In addition to all of the mature hellebores. Look at all of these babies under here. And some of those are getting ready to flower. 
So I'm hoping that we'll get a nice blanket of snow that will kind of cover all of that. Now, sadly, one thing I have not noticed that I compared uh, to in previous years in my gardening journal is many times by now I'm seeing evidence of all sorts of seedlings that have germinated. Some golden fever few, poppies, um, some little violas, columbine. I'm not seeing any of that this year and it's because we haven't had, it's been warm, it would have been perfect germination conditions had we had any moisture, but we haven't had any and my supplemental watering is just, is not really cutting it. So it tells me that I may not have a very good year for golden fever few or for poppies in the back. Those that did germinate probably dried out in desiccating winds, um, even with some protection. So I, I haven't completely given up on them, but it's, it's just one of those things that make me know it's going to be a little bit iffy for some of those things. Um, I showed you guys this before many, many times, and partly it's just in my, maybe in my last walk about but it's partly because this is the only area that's really got much going at all. The Encore azaleas are starting to put out buds and they just, they handle the cold. I love a plant that, I've said this before, that performs better than it's advertised. So Encore azaleas, it advertises that they can handle it down to about 20 degrees and then you really need to mulch them heavily. These they have really handled cold temperatures, but it's an, but I have mulched them heavily with all of this uh, leafy cover. So back in here, look at these, Stuart. So as promised, these are the ones that I planted last year from Trader Joe's. And once I had them inside and enjoyed them, I showed you these in the last walkabout, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these sweet little flowers. If it were not going to freeze, I wouldn't be doing this. But, and the thing about hellebores is they just are so just abundant. I mean, they will just keep pushing out these gorgeous flowers over and over again as long as conditions remain cool, which is one of the reasons we love them is because they put on a bit of a show when nothing else will. I mean, how sweet is that? What a pretty tussy messy that is. And then if I wanted some foliage, I could cut a pretty big leaf to go along with it too. So I've got those in here and I think, if I remember last year, Stuart, I planted some Another mound of them over on here, and look. And this branch, by the way, you guys, this, it's not even a branch. <laughs> it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's a trunk, isn't it, Stuart? <laughs> Many hundreds of pounds. This is what came down uh, a year ago, October, from the ice storm. But look here, these aren't blooming quite, these aren't quite open enough yet, but you can see here, Look at all these fun buds. Look down there, Stuart. Look at that. That is just happiness. That is just happiness. So those aren't even really big enough to cut. I might take a leaf or two from here. But, uh, so the other two or the other three that I've got inside, I'll probably plant them in this same area. So I'll have a big mass of that purpley old fashioned hue that I think will be pretty in this area. And obviously since they did well here, I know that similar hellebores will also do well in this area. So let's walk this way, Stuart. And Stuff looks really, you know, it looks really dry because it is. I still haven't made any progress yet on getting a new light pole for the front. I will, will maybe do the work on that in the next few days. Now look here, you guys, as I'm out here. These are just some of my favorite things to do. Look how pretty that is, Stuart. If you wanted to make a little bouquet, a little tussy messy pre-Valentine's, this is, I think this is 
Obsession Nandina. And I just, look at that beautiful color echo. Love, 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 love it. So I'll probably come out a little bit later and cut more of this. But in addition to loving it because of the color, I love it because of the textural contrast. Uh-oh, hellebore down. Okay. So that is very, very pretty. And... Yeah, it's just dry. Now, some of you have have messaged me, texted me, emailed me and said, oh, I've got tulips coming up already. Should I be worried? And no, you should not be worried. In fact, I'm a little bit worried that I don't see more that have already come up. And that's because it's been so dry, I believe. But I am going to mark in my garden journal that I am starting to see my very first tulips coming up through the dirt, just the, the very tips of them. And this, this kind of shows you guys just how dry it is. But look here, I've got one there, I've got one there. You can even see that some of the sedums are starting to put a little bit of growth on. But I'm gonna, this is the ugly season, you guys. Look, there's another one there. So I'm, I'm encouraged that I'm starting to see the tips of them, but they're not really going to do much until we get some more, until we get some moisture, even though I've been kind of watering them. Look at how beautiful all those red Nandinas look. You could easily go to your grocery store right now and come back with some deep, deep maroon carnations, maybe some dahlias, maybe even some chrysanthemums and just you might even do what I do sometimes and that's I will take something like this and I will take it to my florist or to my grocery store or whatever and then see what looks pretty with it and so before you know it you have a free bouquet from the dead of winter out in your garden. And, and I've also got some of this um, uh, uh, limey, Stuart, what's the name of Southern Living Plant? Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. I'm having a, I'm having a brain lapse. Lemon, lemon Lime Nandina, thank you, Stuart. I haven't had enough coffee this morning. <laughs> lemon Lime Nandina, I, I love those two, that really chartreuse color. Um, but I, I don't think I, I think I want this to stay a really, really intense red. And by the way, Stuart, before we started working together, Stuart, you really didn't know much about gardening at all, did you? And now he's showing off, coming up with, oh, that's, le <laughs> that's lemon lime night Nandina. So there you go. Oh, let me see something else that might be fun. I don't have a lot of these, but look, there's even a few rose hips that I could cut. I don't have a lot, but I've got just a few, and that could be a fun, if you're just making little tiny bouquets, that could be very, very fun. I see some more rose hips up there. This is one of those drift roses. So there is a very last minute I won't go. I'll try not to get hit. You guys, something else that's kind of fun to use in your in your flower arrangements. I love the look of the seed heads from the crepe myrtles. I love the texture of those. I think they're really beautiful. Can we get that in focus? And you could put something like that in there. And I think that's so pretty too. So there's just some ideas. A little bit of what's going on out here. It's going to be... Uh, like I say, very, very cold, so I want to snag whatever looks pretty right now because we're going to be inside for a while, Stuart. What kind of stew or soup are you going to be making? Whatever you, whatever, <laughs> whatever you make, bring it over for me. Bring some for me. So there you go. There is a little indoor-outdoor Wednesday walkabout. Make sure if you are in a dry area right now and there's a, a real big cold front coming, hard freeze coming, then you make sure to water in your plants too. See you this weekend. 
Well, if you've held on this long, here is my outfit du jour. My earrings, aren't these earrings fun, you guys? This definitely was in the category of my sister had some, so then I had to have some too. She is getting married and I was doing a Zoom consult with her. She lives in Indiana and she had these earrings on and I just loved them. So she told me she got them off of Amazon. They are inexpensive. I think they would make a really, really good Valentine's Day gift or a gift for yourself like mine. And I like them because they're multicolored so you could wear lots of different colors with them today. My outfit is red. So Stuart, let's try to put a link there. Um, they will also be, you guys can also go to my Amazon shop. Um, on my link tree and Instagram and all of these things that we recommend are are in my Amazon shop under various different categories. Certainly if you can find them anywhere else then by all means do so. It's not that I am just really all about Amazon but remember for those of you that are concerned about giving Amazon too much business, lots of small business people shop via Amazon. So, so it does support those that use Amazon as a platform. So there you go. Um, these are my earrings. My, let's see, this also, this is, I love these lightweight hoodies. And I got this one years ago. It's, it's very thin, so it's great for layering under jackets and even blazers and things. I got this one off of Amazon, I think a long time ago. Not sure where I got my tea. I think it's a, I think it's a Boatnik J. Crew that I've had for a long time. My britches, I know I have had for a very long time. These are skinny cords from Land's End. Uh, my belt, I think I got from Nordstrom Rack. And these boots, you guys have seen them before. I got these at Target many, many years ago. So Stuart, did I forget anything? Okay, so there you go. There is my outfit of the day.